Hey, welcome back. It's glad, good to see you guys again. Glad you've taken some time out to come hear God's word, hang out with us. It is tag time. I'm Pastor Carol. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What is tag time? If you haven't been here before, it's our time where we get together, our youth ministry, which is named tag. We get together each and every week so that we can hear God's words, so that we can learn a little bit more about who God is and how we can live our lives in a way that pleases him so we can do the best that we can to live the Christian lifestyle that God has in store for us. I am, again, very thankful and excited that you are here right now because, as we're going to talk about today, we have a great holiday that's coming up just a few days from now, and that is Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving Day is just a few days away if you're watching this on the premiere day, but of course it's available to you later. Thanksgiving is coming up. And Thanksgiving is personally, it's my favorite American holiday. Different holidays can be broken up into different uh, categories. So we have like spiritual holidays that we celebrate. And then we have national or patriotic or American holidays. And for me, um, Thanksgiving is just, you know, my favorite holiday. And we're going to talk about why, but we're also going to talk about why it matters for us as a Christian, as a believer is this holiday something that we should celebrate, which is what we do with all the holidays? How should we celebrate it in a way that glorifies God? All that kind of stuff. All those are great questions. I thank you for asking them. Keep them coming in, and I'm going to do my best to answer them today. So we're going to start out. We're going to look at, at God's Word. We're going to look at uh, the holiday itself, and again, how, why, and what we should do concerning Thanksgiving Day. Before we get to the Word, though, quick history in dealing with Thanksgiving days, different lessons that we've been taught most of our lives in school and here and there about what happened with Thanksgiving. Uh, so going back to the first Thanksgiving, uh, it was a rough time for the people that came over to this land. They weren't originally Americans uh, because the United States wasn't a country yet. But anyway, some people traveled from where they were to here. And uh, the first winter that they were here, lots and lots of people died. And it was a very, very difficult hard, tragic, rough, and tough time. Why did so many people die? Well, when they sailed over, some people got disease. Uh, when they got here, they didn't know anything about the weather, how cold it would be or, or not. And they were, you know, particularly in the Northeast where there's kind of a rough climate. Uh, so over that winter, a lot of people died and they didn't know what to do for food. The climate was different, so they didn't know how to plant things and things uh, like that. They didn't know uh, what food they could get, how to get the food, all those different kind of things. So, as the story goes, uh, some of the people that came over uh, got with some Indians. Some Indians showed them how to do different things. How to grow corn was one of the popular things that they learned about. But how to do crops, how to farm the land, how to take care of things the way they needed to be taken care of. So that the second time the winter was rolling around, things were looking a whole lot better. They weren't just going to have to struggle through and barely get through the winter time. They weren't going to lose a whole bunch of people. And so uh, the, the new people that came over and the Indians got together, they wanted to have a Thanksgiving feast. And particularly the people that traveled over, they wanted to thank God because they believed that the Indians helping them uh, to get their food and stuff straight was an answer from God allowing them to be able to survive. And they wanted to have guests and they wanted to have a good time. And they just wanted to thank God for things turning around for them. So Thanksgiving is not just a thing that was a good idea. They started out, they were just really, really thankful to God that they were able to survive and that they had some friendships and acquaintances that they had made with some people. So as we continue on to celebrate this holiday, uh, we're not just a, a flighty kind of thankful, but we're thankful to God in particular all right, we're not thankful to the universe. Some people are. They just, they're, they're thankful for thankfulness. Not exactly sure why things are the way they are, and they just uh, believe in weirdo stuff. We're not thankful to the trees. We're not thankful to the ele elephants or the animals or the anything. We're thankful to God because we know that from God, all the good things that happen to us come from. All the good blessings flow from God the Father. So as we go into uh, celebrating Thanksgiving, it reminds us that we're supposed to be thankful people. 
Now, Thanksgiving is an annual celebration in the United States, but giving thanks should not be something that we only do annually. Thanksgiving is not something that we should only be participating in once a year or every now and then for the believer, especially. Thanksgiving should actually be a daily thing. Now, we're not going to bust out the turkey and all the stuff and take off from work every single day, but we do need to be thankful and have thankfulness in our hearts. So we're talking about having an attitude of gratitude. So we want our attitude to be one of thanksgiving, an attitude of being grati- of, of gratitude, being grateful for all the blessings that God has given us. And we can have an attitude of gratitude even in difficult times. And so we want to talk about that attitude. The more you have an attitude of gratitude, the more your life will be enjoyed. If you are thankful for what you have and not constantly worried or upset about what you don't have, you will enjoy your own life 10 times more than if you're not thankful. You don't even have to be a super negative person all the time, but simply being thankful, finding something to be thankful for will cause your life to be so much more enjoyable by you, even if nothing changes. Now, we believe that God is going to cause things to change that are not right. We believe that God is going to cause us to go to new levels of good. But no matter where we are, Bible teaches us to be content. And so we can be great, greatly thankful for God and his goodness to us. So I want to start in the Bible over in Luke chapter 17. So get your Bible. Yes, it's time for you to have your Bible. You can use your phone, your tablet, your whatever. But I want you to read this scripture with me. So turn over there, swipe over there, flip over there whatever you need to do. We're just going to look at a few verses in Luke chapter 17. We want to look at this brief story, and it it talks about gratitude and thankfulness. Now, if you are not mindful, if I'm not mindful to be uh, thankful for the things I have, it's very easy to forget to be thankful. It's very easy to not notice things that we can be thankful for in the moment because we're just not thinking about that. And there are times when people might do things for us. And because we're not having thankfulness on our mind, we may not even recognize that they're going out of their way to help us. How many times have you opened the door for someone to walk in and they just go on in and they don't say thank you? You know, shouldn't be a huge deal, but it's something that crosses our mind. Sometimes we go out of our way to do something for a person. They don't say thanks. They don't show any sign of gratitude, anything like that. And Sometimes we feel like we shouldn't have done it because they took it for granted. Well, same thing happens in our lives, right? A lot of times we can take things for granted simply because we're not being thankful. So direct your attention to Luke chapter 17. I think you're there now. Start reading with me at verse number 11. I'm reading from the King James. You can read along with whatever version you have. 11 says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, talking about Jesus, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men, everybody say 10 men, that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now they had to stand afar off because they were lepers. A leper is a person that has leprosy. I actually learned recently that, uh, particularly for Texas, you know, we have armadillos down here in in the south and the southwest. Armadillos carry leprosy still, in 2020. Now, leprosy isn't something that is a big deal for us. It's, it's for the most part been wiped out uh, in our country and, and at this time. And so it's not something that we have to think about. But in this time, leprosy is an incurable terminal disease, right? So incurable means there's no cure for it. It's not going away. And terminal means it's going to kill you. So incurable, terminal And it was also very, very painful. So leprosy was a skin disease where there was something on the skin that was like eating the skin. And so eventually, you know, a person that had leprosy, their skin would just be eaten all up and they would have sores and stuff all over their bodies. And it was very contagious. If you touched a person that had leprosy, uh, they would they would transfer that to you for the most part. Um, And, you know, so the lepers had to go way out of town. We learned about cross-contamination, so if lepers were touching the same stuff that that another person was touching, they would pass that leprosy on. So 
They kicked them out way out to the edge of town. They lived by themselves or only other lepers. And it was a very, very difficult life. And it was a bad disease to have to deal with. So these 10 lepers, they see Jesus. They stay afar off because they have to. But in verse 13, it says they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now they said, have mercy on us. What do you think they meant when they asked Jesus to have mercy on them having this incurable disease? Yes, I think that's right. I think they were asking that Jesus would heal them and take this sickness, this disease away from them. What does Jesus do? Great man that he uh, is and was says that verse 14, when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. So he saw them and he just said to them, go show yourself to the priest. That's what they had to do to be allowed back in town. The priest had to lay eyes on them and know that they didn't have uh, the sickness anymore. So Jesus performed a healing and he didn't even do anything special. He didn't lay hands on them. He didn't herk and jerk and spit. He didn't call down fire. He just said, okay, go show yourselves to the priest. And it says, as they went, they were cleansed. So as they went to be obedient and do what God told them to do, their leprosy just started disappearing. The sores on their body and on their skin started to heal up just immediately and instantly as they were walking and they went away. Now, if they had an attitude of gratitude, if they were thinking in the moment about what happened, now, I'm not judging them, you know, we don't know if there were any stories that this had ever happened before. Uh, and, it, and it was different. Maybe they didn't know what was going on. They were just going to be obedient. But no one immediately said thank you. They just went on to do what Jesus told them to do. And as they went to do that, they were healed on the way. So if we keep reading down, verse number 15 says, One of them, everybody say one of them, all right, only one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back. Now stop reading. How many did we start out with? Ten. Now one of them decides to turn back when he sees that he was cleansed. So only 10%, if we were looking at, at percentages, one out of 10 who received the healing through Jesus decided to turn back. Why did he turn back? We'll read the second part of verse 15. It says, with a loud voice, he glorified God and he fell down at his feet. The, leper, the previous leper fell down at the feet of Jesus giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan and Jesus answered him and said weren't there ten cleansed but where are the nine Jesus noticed that he just uh, caused healing to happen in the lives of ten men but only one of them actually came back to say thank you only one of them gave glory to God for this great miraculous healing now I don't think it's because the the previous lepers were terrible people. I don't think it's because they were entitled and just knew that God was going to heal them and he should and they took it for granted. They probably got caught up in the fact that now they could go see their families again. They probably got caught up knowing that they were healed and they were just excited and, and, and overwhelmed and you know it just must not have crossed their mind at the time. Well that's what happens when we don't have an attitude of gratitude. We can receive a healing from a painful, incurable, terminal disease. And because our attitude is not normally thankful, or our attitude is not one of gratitude, we don't even think to say thanks. So as we go into this Thanksgiving day, as we celebrate this holiday, I want you to continue to thank God for all the great things, all the small things, all the medium-sized things in your life that you can be thankful for and go from this time forward just constantly being thankful. The more thankful you are, the more you'll enjoy your life, but also the more thankful you are, you'll be able to unlock more and more of God's blessings for you because he knows that you're appreciative because you are constantly on your mind. Uh, those things are constantly on your mind and you're thanking God for them and he'll continue to shell them out. God can be blessing us right now and if we don't have an attitude of gratitude, we may not even recognize it. And how messed up would that be? So just like you would like to be thanked when you do some good things, make sure you constantly thank God. It'll change your disposition, it'll help you enjoy life, and it'll be you doing 
what God has called you to do. All right, my friends, time's up. That's it. Where did it go? I don't know. But I'll see you next week. Enjoy Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. We'll see you next time, Tag. You're it. <laughs>